Just before we get started today, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Beard Blaze. Some of you might have heard this before, but I've got another channel called Brain Blaze, and that actually led to the development of this very product. Long story short, I made a joke on that channel about how all YouTubers are beauty ragers. A fan of that channel wrote to me being like, Simon, don't start a beauty product, but start a beard product. Look at your glorious beard. Make a beard oil. I will help you make a beard oil. And together, well, he made it. He's like a scientist with a big lab and stuff, and I'm just a fact boy on the internet. But he sent me a bunch of different samples to try it. I tried them. We came up with a range of beard oils and other beard stuff, by the way, like bar and we recently launched shampoos and conditioners. All of it is fantastic stuff. It's all stuff that I've personally tried myself and kind of just guinea pigged myself on. Everyone really likes it though, so that's fantastic. There's no special code or anything because we're just making good beard oils at a good price. There is a link in the description below and let's get into the video. <laughs> There are some quirks about international borders that just make you shake your head in confusion. Like that part of Russia that sits on the other side of Lithuania, or how part of Azerbaijan is separated from the rest of Azerbaijan by the entire of Armenia. But while weird borders can sometimes result in an armed conflict, as is the case of picking a completely random here, Azerbaijan and Armenia, sometimes they have more subtle consequences. Here we have you one such consequence, when the splitting of an island resulted in the creation of a ghost town. This is the story of Verosha, the Cypriot tourist city that was left abandoned when an age-old rivalry split an island in two. Verosha is, or was rather, a suburb of the city of Famagusta, which is just a delightful name to say out loud. Famagusta. The name Varosha comes from the Turkish word Varosh, which literally means suburb, a remnant of when Cyprus was a part of the Ottoman Empire. Before that, however, Famagusta spent, I'm going to stop it. <laughs> Famagusta spent much of its existence as a small fishing village before it was transformed by who else other than the French. Many French people had traveled to the Eastern Mediterranean because of the Crusades, and some of those Crusaders ended up in Cyprus, where through sheer pretentiousness they managed to install themselves as rulers of the island. Under their rule, Famagusta began to develop into a sizable port, and then, in 1291, a massive number of Christians were expelled from the Levant by the Islamic Mamluk Sultanate. Almost all of those refugees ended up in Famagusta, turning it into one of the most prosperous cities in the Christian world at the time. The next several centuries saw Cyprus ping-ponged around between various states and empires before it came under the aforementioned Ottoman Empire in 1571. At this point, the island was controlled by the Venetians, a fact that you may vaguely remember from the time that your English teacher forced you to read Othello. And now, well, here you are, learning about history your own way. Good for you. It's more interesting, isn't it? The Venetians put up quite a fight to keep the city. The Ottomans lost over 50,000 soldiers in the siege, which may explain why they proceeded to flay the Venetian commander alive afterwards. <laughs> Holy sh**. So yes, remember how far we've come? The past was the worst. Anyway, following the imposition of Ottoman rule, many of the Latin, read French, residents of Famagusta left the island. The Greek natives were initially given legal protections, but were eventually told that they would have to settle outside of the city in the same area that would later become Verosha. Fast forward a few centuries, and Cyprus is leased by the Ottomans to the British, who developed Famagusta into a world-class port and military base. Fast forward again to 1960, and Cyprus is granted independence in a complicated agreement between Britain, Greece, and Turkey. It's at this point that Famagusta and its tourist quarter, Verosha, begin to shine. Cyprus, obviously, is a Mediterranean island, which is practically a synonym for summer paradise, and post-independence, Famagusta immediately began burnishing its credentials as a tourist heaven. And what does a tourist heaven have, exactly? Well, beaches, bars, and booze, for the most part. Picture everything a Caribbean tourist town has, like Miami or the Bahamas or Havana pre Fidel Castro, and transplant it over to the Mediterranean. You have old historical buildings such as churches for the casual history buffs, and then the parties that go all night for the more extroverted types. And of course, there's world-class beaches and a warm-water sea. 
This gosh, a little something for everybody sounds like a tourist brochure for a place that's abandoned. The 1960s and 70s saw some of the most famous celebrities of the time devoting their summer vacations to the city of Famagusta and the quarter of Varosha in particular. Given that TikTok didn't exist half a century ago, you'd probably never recognize their names, but a few of them were people like Elizabeth Taylor and Brigitte Bardot. Really important people of the time, believe me. It's even speculated that the Swedish band ABBA played their first concert there. The story goes that what started out as singing for fun turned into an impromptu live performance in front of, well, what else other than a group of UN soldiers stationed on the island. Those stories aside, Verosha and, more broadly, Famagusta made their impact on Cyprus known. By some measures, Famagusta represented anywhere from one-tenth to one-fifth of the Cypriot economy, and its population of 39,000 would swell to more than 100,000 in the peak summer tourist season. And that's honestly how things could have continued had our old friend politics not intervened and just ruined everything. For reasons far too complex and long-winded to explain right now, and given the fact that we've already explained them in another video on this very channel, Turkey invaded the island of Cyprus in July and August of 1974. Famagusta was in their path, and prior to the opposing armies engaging each other, more or less the entire population of Famagusta fled the city out of fear of a massacre. A ceasefire was called not long after the city was taken, and the Green Line was established, dividing Cyprus into two. Famagusta ended up on the Turkish side of the line. Beyond that, however, the Turkish army proceeded to fence off the suburb of Verosha, primarily because the properties there were owned by Greek Cypriots. They obviously were not allowed to return. Over the years, various cases have been lodged with international organizations over their lost property, but to little avail. The Turkish Cypriots began to call Verosha Maras because they didn't want anything on their side of the island to be associated with Greek Cypriots. And so it has remained for close to 50 years, with the once vibrant hotels and restaurants decaying with time from a tourist town to a ghost town. That is until the late 2010s, when the Turkish Cypriot government opened the area for the first time to visitors, specifically only Turkish ones. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, check out that other video we've done all about Cyprus, which gives a much broader context. There's a link to that below. Thank you for watching.